Which is bigger, one six inch pipe or two four inch pipes? Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're draining a very large area. And take a look, you can kind of see how much water is coming down. This is the neighbor's yard coming towards us. And there's so much water coming down this hill from the backyard and we need to send this all the way out to the street. It's a little over 300 feet from where I'm standing out to the curb. So the question is, should you use two four inch pipes or should you use one six inch pipe? There is so much water coming down here. You would think that two four inch pipes would be equivalent to eight inch, much larger than six inch, but it's not. During a big event rainfall, the two four inch pipes only fill up about half ways. So really it's still only a four inch pipe. Running 6 inch pipe is much better and moves a much larger volume of water. 6 inch pipe is really the best way to go on this job. We could have run two 4 inch pipes, but like I said, it really doesn't have the same volume as a 6 inch line. So right now what we're doing is we're beginning the job. It's 6.30 a.m. and we've got to unload the trailer. A lot of people knock that trailer, but you know what? Does it really matter how you get your materials to the job site? And we're getting to the trencher. We need to get that trencher out so that we can actually begin to trench this line. Strongly suggest a trencher. If you're going to try to do this yourself, you could do this by hand, but we're gonna knock this job out in five hours. And you know what? That trencher makes the work go quick. Because of the amount of water that is coming from these yards, remember I just showed you two yards, but there's actually an entire neighborhood of water that drains and then tries to divert and come between these two houses. So we're gonna run the 12 by 12 cat basins rather than the smaller ones. Why? Because we can easily attach six inch pipe and have a six inch discharge out of a 12 by 12. If it was four by four, then we would simply run the smaller cat basins, put two of them, and the result is close to the same, but six inch pipe is so much larger in volume, it will move twice the water of two four inch pipes. The object of this drain is to add four catch basins. And as that water comes down the hill, it's kind of like a parking lot. Have you noticed how there's storm drains throughout the parking lot? The water is collected in several different places. So as it comes down that hill, it drops into each catch basin and is carried out to the street. We start by trenching a long line. This is the discharge from way back in the back, 300 feet from here. This is going to be a six inch pipe and we need to have a trench wide enough for that to do so. To keep our fall, once it gets out here, we need to come over by the driveway for the discharge. So the line turns and runs to the driveway. And you can see where I've already made that line trench deeper and wider using the trencher. You could also use a shovel but it's much easier to use the trencher if you've rented one or if you own one to just come back through the second time, the second pass, and pull that trencher, widen your trench. We're going to use a lot of that excess soil to mound it up back here in the back and force that water into the trench. The line will start with a large catch basin at the low spot where that V from the neighbor's yard, the gully, and from this customer's yard comes together right here. All the water drains to that point. We need to catch that water directly. Okay, so we've almost got this trench done. We've got about 40 feet more to go. The guys are pulling the trencher. You can see the path that we're gonna follow where the customer had dug a small trench, but it doesn't work like that. We're gonna come right back to here and put a 12 by 12 basin down in the ground and that takes all this water from back here in the back we'll send it all the way out to the street what we're doing now is making the second pass with the trencher notice it's only five inch wide with a single pass so we need to go again to make this eight inches wide to, to lay our six inch pipe this takes a little bit longer but once we finish the trench we'll clean out that excess debris that's dropping down put it off to the side, we'll haul a lot of that soil away, but we'll also keep a mound there, forcing that water as it comes from that neighbor's property over to this area, it will drop into our catch basins and be carried away. 
Notice how the trencher is widening our trench. That boom, that chain, is cutting the second portion of that trench. We need to be eight inches wide in order to lay a six inch pipe. So we take our time, we go relatively slow, and it will widen this trench and it will be perfect. We'll be able to remove the soil and lay that pipe. Remember, it comes in a hundred foot roll. So we've got to roll it out, lay it down, and then soon we'll install the cat stations. We will be installing four 12 by 12 cat basins to collect this water. When you install your catch basin, make sure that it's deep enough to collect the water. Notice, you can see we're actually creating a, a bowl around the catch basin. This will allow that water to drop directly into the basin and be carried away. So many times we see catch basins that have been installed that are a few inches above the low spot. And of course, it does work when it floods, but it's not really collecting all the water. They need to be set at the right depth. Here we're actually going a little deeper because there's so much water coming down this hill. We need an area and a place to collect that water and let it get into our system. So you can see creating that bowl is needed to collect all that water as it comes down that hill. It's very important to get that at the right depth. You can see we've also removed quite a bit of soil here and we're continuing to work. It's only about 930 and we've left a small amount here. We're going to pull a little bit more of that away, but we need that berm for that water to follow our line and drop into the catch basins. And you can see them as we walk down through there. Remember, when you're collecting immediate surface water runoff, you need catch basins. And this has already got some slope, some downhill fall from that low spot in the backyard out here to the street. And what we're doing is we're creating it a place for that water to go. It will be even better. You can see our line, it goes all the way out and through the sidewalk. Something the homeowners could easily do themselves, but you're, I would suggest that you rent a machine, whether it be an excavator or a trencher. I think the trencher does a great job and it knocks this job out in just a matter of, you know, a few hours. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and cut the curb. I already cut the walk and now I'm cutting a V into the curb. This is a half round curb and I've showed this many times. I've sped the video up here just to get through it because it's just noisy and loud and dusty. But half round curbs, I usually make a V cut and that allows that water to come really nice out here to the street. So we're almost done. We're basically going to lay this last section of pipe and we'll go ahead and backfill. We'll put some more concrete across the driveway, finish that off. It'll look really good. And we're done here. This is something that you guys could do yourselves if you want to tackle the project. It's a pretty good, pretty good sized project. 300 feet of six inch is a lot of pipe. You know, in addition to that long six inch line, we also installed downspout drains here on the same job. And this is still the same day. The downspout drain is the most important part of your rainwater drainage system. Your roof ga gathers so much water during a, a one inch rainfall, just a one inch rainfall, it's gathering 1160 gallons for every 2000 square feet of roof. That is a lot of water. And if it's just draining out onto the ground, it's just going to go right back into your crawl space or your basement. There's just, there's, it'll come right back. Even in a yard like this one that has very little fall, we can run four inch solid pipe and move that water out and away from this foundation. We're going to join several downspouts together. We're also going to add a catch basin in the lowest portion of this section of the yard, which is right by that gate. That's pretty normal. You're going to find you know, all, all the time that that water is going to collect where you walk, and that's going to be right where you stand and open the gate. That will become a low spot. So whether you do this job yourself or you pay a contractor to come in and do it like we're doing, Make sure that you have a good plan, and you should know what your drainage issues are. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day!